Today I have 14 new Canva features to talk about, so I don't have any time to waste on an introduction. Let's go. What is up guys, Ronnie here. Welcome back to the channel. Super happy to be back with you today. I have a fresh haircut as you can see. Shout out to my man Sandy who gave me this haircut this morning. If you need a barber in Barcelona, Sandy's your guy. So I feel good, I feel fresh, I feel ready to tackle these 14 new Canva features. So without further ado, let's jump into Canva and start discovering these features. All right, let's start with some UI UX changes. I have a bunch of them. Canva has been changing little things here and there. So let's start with these. The first one is that the page limit on any document has increased from 250 pages to 300 pages. So that's 50 additional pages for all our documents, which is a good news. And it's not only the number of pages which is increasing, but also the total number of elements of images in your document. It used to be 1000 elements or images that you could use in your document and that has now been upgraded to 1200, so 200 more, but also the total number of videos, previously 250 videos in a document and now you can have up to 300 videos in one single document. So all of this is good news. Canva is growing and giving its users more space to express their creativity. So kudos to that. The second new feature I want to talk about is the ability to search for a specific page when you search in all of your Canva documents. So in order to show you how that works, I first want to show you what needs to be done prior to searching, okay? Because this feature will allow us to search for specific pages in your document, but if you don't name your pages, this is not gonna work super well. So here I have a Canva presentation Okay, it has uh, 17 pages. So you see here all of the slides. This is a previous episode of What's Hot. So the first thing you need to do if you want to name your pages, you need to be in the other mode, not the thumbnail view like this one. So click the little arrow right here. So you get into this scrolling mode and I'm gonna zoom out a bit. And now you see on top of each page, you can add a page title. So let's start with this, for example. So I'm gonna go to a specific feature presentation right here in this previous episode of What's Hot. And I'm going to name these download notes in the editor. So download notes in the editor. Okay, so good. I don't need to save anything, it's auto-saving. And I'm going to use this page seven right here. Call this retouch your photos from Pixabay. Okay, good enough. So I have added these two title pages in this specific document. Now, I'm just going to head back over the Canva homepage. And now I can search here for specific keywords. Okay, so let's say I'm going to search for Pixabay. Okay, search for Pixabay. I'm going to hit enter. So this is the first result. I am here in the templates. So what you want to do is to make sure you are in your project, searching in your projects. Okay. And now I can see two results here with uh, the title Pixabay or the keyword Pixabay included in them. And I see here this little tag that says two matches. So if I hover my mouse over this tag, it says we found two pages that contain the terms you search. Okay. So if I click on that, it will show me all of the pages from this document and the two matches, the two pages that match my keyword search. So there is a timestamp here where I have all of the title from the video and we can see the word Pixabay right here. So it not only searches the title of your pages, like this page right here, page number seven that I renamed Pixabay, but also carries the name Pixabay, but also what's inside your document. The reason why I wanted to retitle these pages is to show you it works better if you actually title your pages correctly. All right, let's try the other one. It says notes. If I hit enter, I can see the same document right here. So two matches. And if I go to my matches, this time I find download notes in the editor. So that is the page I actually 
rename. And all of this to show you that you can now search for specific keywords and Canva will not only show you the documents in which you can find this keyword, but also the specific pages where the keyword shows up or appears or appears in the title. So this is a very powerful search feature. There's just one thing you should know is that this feature is only available as of today on desktop and not the desktop app version, but the desktop web version of Canva. So when you open Canva in your web browser from a computer. All right, moving on to the next feature. The next tweak in Canva's user interface is called trending carousel in the apps tab. And it has to do with the apps button. So let's go find this button in our document right here. I am in the Canva editor. So the novelty here under the apps button is this little carousel right here that says trending. So I have, I believe, four different tiles in this carousel. And these are just some of the most popular apps in the Canva apps marketplace that they wanted to feature here. You can click on any of these apps to actually open it and start using it. So this is just a neat little shortcut to show you what's hot in the apps marketplace. All right, moving on to the next thing. I am moving fast here because these are just minor tweaks. This one is called recent design styles and it allows us to apply the style of a recent design we have created in Canva to our current design. So if we come back to our design right here, I'm going to move over the design tab right here and I'm gonna search for the style tab. So if I click on style, and scroll down a bit, I will see a new section right here. Say it says new with your recent design. So these are just some of the most recent designs I have opened in Canva. And I can click on see all. And so when I expand this, I see all of the latest designs I have used in Canva and I can apply the style of this design to my current document. So I'm not sure I want to do this on this presentation that my team helped me design. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just simply come back out of this and find another document that I don't mind messing up with. So for example, this one right here, I'm gonna go to design styles and similarly, I should see the style here. Let's try to apply the style of this presentation. And there you go. I have applied the style of this. I can shuffle the style and yeah, looks pretty good. So if you remember the previous set of slides from the What's Hot, the previous What's Hot kind of looked pink like this. And uh, that's exactly what I did. I applied the style of a recent document. This is a neat little add-on that will help us stay consistent with our designs from project to project. So well done. The next new feature is called Session Duration Insights. And this one has to do with the analytics that you can see now in every single Canva document. So let me open one to show you. I'm gonna open this presentation from a previous tutorial, my Flourish tutorial. So the first thing you need to do is to locate the Insights button, which should be right here on top next to your little profile picture. So if I click here, I see different tabs right here. And some of these tabs are for pro users only, like engagement, unique links, and social media. Okay, but if you click on the first one, views, you should see at least the total number of views that this document has been viewed and the total number of viewers or different users who have opened this document. So the new feature I want to show you is actually a pro feature because it is stuck under this second tab right here, engagement, you can see the little pro crown right here indicating it is a pro feature. So if I click here, this is the new thing right here. The average time viewed, okay, zero second. That is probably because we don't have enough data on this specific document. And I've been searching a variety of my designs. I couldn't find one with uh, an actual number here, but I guess that's probably because the feature launched after I created the document. But you should see here, like the average duration and, uh, a user stays and interacts or collaborates in one of your documents. So that's just a neat little insight right here. And you can see like these other things right here, like unique links uh, gives us the ability to create unique links to share with people on social media or email to count views on this specific design. So it's kind of like a UTM tracking link that Canva allows you to create uh, and you can create these for blog posts, business leads, or marketing emails. So it's just a way of tracking like the people who come to your Canva document could be pretty useful. 
And then we have social media. Share your design to any of these channels to get some insights. So I guess this is for people who decide to link their Canva account to their social media account and then publish or schedule their design directly from Canva to their social media account, they will also access some insights about their specific document shared via this dashboard right here. So insights, the little button right here, I would recommend you check it out, especially if you are a pro user because you see a bunch of different features are now available to you right here. Moving on to the next feature and talking about moving, this feature is called move to recent folders. I absolutely love this new feature. It's a real time saver. Let me show you what it does. So I'm here again on my Canva homepage. Let's say I want to move this document right here, this Canva doc. It's already in a specific folder that I created. Let's say I want to move this to another folder. So if I click on move to folder, I will now see an additional tab right here that says recent. And previously, what what you would see is something like this. So you would see your project and when you click on your project, you would see all of your different folders that you have created and organized in Canva. So you would have to always start at the root of this organization system that you might have created. And so Canva had this great idea of adding that extra tab right here, the recent tab, to give us the most recently used folders we've been using. So it, there's a good chance that you will probably move that specific document to one of the folders you've been using recently. So this is adding a little bit of user friendliness, like ease of use for us, because because there is a high probability we will want to move this design into a folder we have recently used. So absolutely love this. I noticed this a couple of weeks ago and so I'm very happy to break the news with all of you who might not already know. And this is exactly the type of tweaks that I like because it doesn't change much but it makes our lives easier. So thumbs up. All right, the next UI tweak I want to talk about has got to do with the text to image app. So let's jump back over our document right here. And I'm gonna go to the apps button and find text to image. That's the first one right here. So the novelty is that you now have aspect ratio right here if you scroll down a bit or you should be able to see it without scrolling even but before previously you only had uh, the squared text to image so only one format everything was squared now you have landscape and portrait so this is to accommodate different types of documents that might exist in canva right here i have a presentation so it would be good for me to have a design let's go to the absolute last page of this add a page or two. Okay, I have two pages here. So basically, I can prompt text to image and choose to have a landscape photo. So let's prompt text to image to show me a YouTuber with a beard at the zoo. Okay, a YouTuber with a beard at the zoo. All right, landscape and uh, which style? Let's say concept art. Okay, generate the image. Canvas AI are going to get to work and generate four different images, four different concept art of a YouTuber with a beard at the zoo. All right, so let's look at the results generated. The first one right here. So we have our YouTuber right here seems like a zoo yes but the youtuber looks more like a firefighter than an actual youtuber he has something in his hand might be a camera okay i will take it second one this one right here we have a guy with a backpack he might have a camera in his youtube gear in his backpack he's at the zoo yep that's good but mostly what i wanted to show you is the format has been respected we have landscape and landscapes. So this was the actual tweak in the Canvas UI that I wanted to demonstrate with this new feature. And don't go anywhere because I do have another feature related to text to images. And that is the ability that you now have to prompt in any language. Canva promises that they understand prompts in any language so that text to image is now widely available for the whole world to enjoy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same prompt, but I'm going to change this to a random language. So in order to do this, I'm going to use my good old friend Google Translate. Okay, so I'm going to paste my 
first prompt right here, YouTuber with a beard at the zoo. All right, so which language am I gonna choose? I'm just gonna go randomly, I'm gonna close my eyes. Okay, this one. So Swahili, YouTuber Mwenye Devu Kenye Bustani Ya Wanyama. I think my pronunciation was on point. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. So I'm going to copy that. There you go. Come back to Canva and I'm going to swap this sentence for the Swahili version and generate more. See what comes up. If Canva holds its promise to generate, yeah, I have some consistent photos here. So let's reduce this one right here. So let's see what we have here. We have this other YouTuber at the zoo. Pretty consistent. We have this one right here. Looks more like Che Guevara, in my opinion, but he might be at the zoo and he, he might be a YouTuber, we don't know. And then we have this one right here with no YouTuber, but half of a lion. So I guess the prompt was correctly translated. So well done Canva for translating and making text to image available, not just to English speakers, because Canva is not just an English speaker software. It's available all over the world in a hundred plus countries and hundred plus languages. So I think the fact that they translate one of their key features nowadays into all of these languages is super important and is very inclusive. So that's one thing I love about Canva and about this particular update. Let's see what else they have in store. All right, the last UI tweak I want to talk about before moving on to the other categories of updates is something that has to do with the model photo editor. So the model photo editor, for those of you who don't know, is simply the ability to work, transform, or edit your photos from the projects tab right here. So let's head over projects and I'm gonna filter all of this by images. Yep, so I have all of my images that I just generated. Let's take a photo from this morning with my beloved hairdresser Sunday that I visited this morning and the new feature has to do with two new filters that we now have at our disposal right here from the model photo editor. I'm talking about the duotone effect and the blur effect. So this is pretty convenient that Canva is adding more and more effects and functionalities to this model photo editor because we can now really start working on our images in full screen mode with a bit more features than before. We have this compare button, which is cool. So let's just apply a duotone effect to this image to show you how it works, just like the duotone would work from within the editor. You see, you don't even have to click on the little settings button. You have the two colors right here. So this is good. I'm gonna go back to my original photo and show you the blur effect because this is the other effect. So this one right here, just adding like a certain level of blur to your photo from zero to 100, 100 being pretty blur. And you can still use the compare button to see before and after. So that's pretty much it for the user experience, user interface changes in Canva. You see there was a bunch of them. Now let's move on to the next category of updates and that is what's new in presentations. Okay, presentations. There's only one feature really to talk about this month and that is a new transition that will be working in your presentation documents but also in your video documents. And that transition is called Flow. So let's discover it. Let's see what it looks like. In order to add a transition, I will need to show the pages first. Okay, so now that I can see all my different pages here, all I have to do is to go in between two pages and click on the Add Transition button. Button. So here, this will show me a menu with all my different transitions here. The novelty is this one right here called flow. Okay, so it creates this transition. So it's kind of like a push transition, but it also adds a bit of movement to the other elements. You see this circle kind of animating so I'm gonna click on it so you can see how it works. You see these elements have been animated to create that flow. So we have different directions. We can animate to the left, to the right, up, down. And uh, we can also set the duration of the animation. By default, I think it's 1.5 seconds. So that's really all I had to show you for what's new in presentation. Let's move on to the next category, which is what's new in videos. 
And here again, under video, I only have one new feature to talk about, but this one will be very interesting for a specific type of users. I'm talking about the video power users, people who are in love with video, create a lot of video and create a lot of high quality video. I'm talking about the ability to download your videos in 4K resolution. Now, this is a pro feature. So if you are a free user, you won't have access to this. So let's jump over a video document so I can show you how this works. Okay, so I have a blank document right here. The first thing I would need to do is to find a 4K video clip that I can use here. So uh, how do you find a 4K video clip? Well, first I need to find my video tabs, which is tucked under the apps button right here. So let's click on that and let's search for 4K. Let's see if I can find any. Let's see the description of this one. For example, yeah, it says 4K video. So yeah, just gonna trust the process and believe this is a 4K video of a guy looking at a very interesting piece of art in a museum. So this is my 4K video. Let's assume I want to export that. Well, first I'm gonna set this as the background. Okay, so let's try to download this clip in 4K. For this, I'm gonna head over the share button, uh, download, and you see here under the quality, it says 1080p HD for streaming, but my slider is not all the way up. So if I go all the way up, like so, I can now see 4K Ultra HD. So that is uh, a superior quality to the 1080p. All right, we can also see that this is move the slider back. This is a pro feature. It's indicated by the little crown right here. So yeah, I can now download my 4K videos in 4K resolution. For this to work, obviously, you will need to find 4K video clips or upload your very own 4K video clips. And also this will only work on desktop. Okay, so the desktop web version, the desktop app version, you will not be able to download in 4K on your mobile phone, at least for now, but maybe in the future, let's hope so. All right, guys, we are making some good progress with this video. I have two more category of updates to talk about. What's new in Canva Docs and what's new in Canva Mobile. But before I go there, I would like to ask you for one little favor, and that is to like this video so it can be placed in front of more people on YouTube. And guys, Diana and I really appreciate your support. We love reading your comments. So if you have any question, doubt, or anything you want to share with us, use the comments below this video video. Just let us know what you think, what you'd love to see more on the channel, anything really. We are here, we will read it and we will answer it. So that being said, back to the video. Let's talk about what's new in Canva Docs. The first new feature in Canva Docs is that you can now use native charts. So let's jump over a Canva document. This is a Canva doc. It is in French, so sorry about that, but there's no big deal. What I'm gonna do is to simply add in the space right here, I'm gonna use the plus button to add a chart. So you can see, if I scroll down, I can use tables, that's not new. But we now have three types of charts, the pie charts, bar charts, and the line charts. So this will work exactly the same way it works in other Canva documents. So let's start with a, a bar chart, for example. So this is just a random data set that Canva gives me. So we can see that the chart has taken the entire width of the document, but we do have an option to resize it. So we can grab one of the extremities of the chart and just uh, squish it into the middle of our document. Unfortunately, we cannot move it around as we wish. I've been asking Canva if that is going to be an option, but it seems to be uh, generating a lot of issues to be able to move things freely in your Canva doc. So they are looking into ways to give us more freedom for images and charts and everything to be able to move them around but it's not gonna be exactly anywhere on the page. But back to our chart here, uh, another interesting feature of this chart is that if I double click on it, I can interact, I can change the data set. So instead of eight here, I could have 18 to make a much bigger bar. And I can also update the labels on my chart. So this could be product one. There you go. This will be product 
two and you see it's changing in lifetime right here on my chart. So that is, in my opinion, a very good thing that we can now use our charts or at least these three types of charts directly in our Canva docs. It is also responsive. So it will look completely different right here on mobile. So we can try that. So I'm gonna open the Canva app right here. I'm gonna fetch this document and show you how the chart looks on the mobile version of this document to show you that the graph, see, is actually very responsive. I still see it full width, but this time on my phone screen, which is pretty cool. What else can I tell you about these charts in Canva Docs? Well, just like the other charts on Canva, you have the possibility to upload your data directly via a CSV file or a Google Sheet. So these options are still available right here. So pretty much you have the full abilities of charts right here in your Canva documents. And this is just, I guess, the first three types of charts. We will probably see more charts in the future landing in Canva Docs. So that was the first feature I wanted to talk about. The second feature I think you should know about related to Canva Docs is simply that they added more Canva Doc templates. So let's head over the Canva Docs icon right here. I click on this and in order to see all of the templates, you can just simply scroll down, click on see all right here and we can see we now have 74 templates. So I think we are coming from 33. The last time I talked about the Canva doc templates in a What's Hot episode it was the previous one. I think it was 33. So we are coming from 33 to 74. So it's a nice jump. And uh, this is probably the beginning of Canva opening up this doc library. It is still only Canva. So if you scroll down, you only see the Canva logo, which means it is not yet open to contributors. They still want to control the initial set of templates and make sure they look great so that people start using Canva Docs more and more. And we do have some interesting templates like Project Tracker. I've seen a copywriting style guy right here, uh, brand guidelines, uh, press relief, content strategy. So a bunch of different interesting one that I have used with my team is this one-on-one -on -one meeting tracker. So this is really, really cool. And the content inside of these templates is actually pretty good. So I'm going to show you this one right here. So I use this to conduct meeting with the people I coach in my team. And you see, for example, you start with a mood check. So you can use an image or a GIF to express how you are feeling this week. And you can fill up your goals uh, and track your goals, etc., etc. So this is a very cool little document template to use. And Canva has just added a bunch of more templates. So I highly recommend you go and uh, have a look. For example, this one right here, user persona, super useful for anyone working with social media, creating a social media strategy. So that's pretty much what's new with Canva Docs. I have one more, one last category to cover, and that is what's new with mobile. All right, mobile. What's new on mobile? Well, this one feature, it's called photo and video to editor. And that is a little camera icon that you see right here on the right side of your main search bar on the Canva homepage on mobile. When I tap on that, I land in my gallery, my camera roll, and I have the possibility to start by selecting multiple images. Previously, Canva will only let me start a design based on one single image, but now I can select multiple ones. So if I want to tell the story of me getting a haircut this morning with my uh, buddy Sandy, I would select like all of the photos with Sandy this morning, including videos. You see this one, number four, it's actually a video, 11 second video. So I can mix photos and videos and simply add them all by pressing the add button right here. And then Canva will ask me which format I want to use to create my story. So I have uh, a choice between all of the different formats right here. Let's say I want an Instagram reel. So yeah, that sounds about right. It shows me all of the different things right here. Can I change the order right here? No, not from here. What I can do is create. So I'm gonna tap create and Canva is going to organize all of these assets on a timeline. So you see them all right here on the timeline and you will see there is this video of me getting my hair washed by Sandy. 
uh, and it's mixed with different photos right here. So yeah, this is pretty cool. It allows me to create faster directly from my camera roll. And yeah, it's just much better than letting me upload one single photo at the time. So yeah, very well done. This will work on mobile web and the mobile app. And that's it, 14 new features. I am curious, like which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below, like what feature of all of these features I presented to you today, which one was your favorite? I'd love to know. All right, I'm gonna leave you guys with this other video right here that I think you should watch next. And as always, the link to our What's Hot playlist in case you missed the previous episodes and want to watch them as well. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.